Hi, everybody. How are you doing? It's so good to see everybody. Hi, hi. <laughs> Sam says, morning, wonderful humans. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hello. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Mary. Colleen. Maria. Linda. It's so good to see everybody. Hope you guys are having a good week so far. I know we're not super far into the week. It's only Tuesday. But, I mean, the plus side is, is that we've already made it through Monday, which usually is the hardest day to get through. I don't know about you, but that's usually the hardest day for me to get through. <laughs> Oh, gosh. So, how you guys doing out there? Facebook's in the house. Hello, Cecilia. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Joy. Hi, Patty. Welcome in, everybody. All right. So, we're not going to waste any time today. We're going to get started with all the things. So, listen. It's already November. Can you believe it? It's November 1st. And I don't know about you, but I feel like October just kind of flew by and I don't, I don't, it was just kind of a blur. <laughs> now, granted, I was busy. I had a lot of fun things going on. Sam and I did lots of stuff together in October. And I'm going to tell you, it's no different for November. Sam and I have a lot of stuff planned for November as well. But I did have an extra live um, in the month of October where uh, I talked about Ava Motherwell and her beads. And that actually happened on the day that I normally kind of do the bargain bead box box. And so, I didn't have an opportunity to do bargain bead box for October and everybody's asked about it. So I know it's November, November 1st. We just barely put our toe into November. Um, but we're going to go ahead and, and visit the October bargain bead box because everybody asked about it. And to be honest with you, it's a beautiful one. The color palette is really, really stunning. I love all of these deep, deep oranges. And so, I can't just ignore it and I haven't had a chance to play with it. So I thought that we would start our first day of November actually going backwards um, and taking a look at the bargain bead box for October. Uh, we'll still do the November bargain bead box. It's just that um, I just want to make sure we don't skip one, you know, because the people at bargain bead box are really good to me. And um, I always want to be sure that I'm taking care of them as well. So that being said, if you're interested in bargain bead box, bargain bead box is a monthly subscription, a bead service subscription, uh, where once a month you get a really cool box of goodies uh, for under $20, which is a pretty darn good deal if you ask me. And so it's a curated box. Every month there is a different theme. Everything really works together. It's beads and metals all together. Um, and then you also are given um, an opportunity, number one, to enter a design contest to win something. But then also you get a coupon that you can use over and over again for the entire month where you can re order the things that are in the box, but then you can also check out all of the other goodies that they have on their sister site, Beadbox Bargains, which I know is kind of a mouthful. It's Bargain Beadbox, Beadbox Bargains. I know, I know, but totally worth it. For those of you who do not have like a wholesale license, like me, I don't have a wholesale license. Shopping on Beadbox Bargains yeah, <laughs> shopping on Beadbox Bargains always makes me feel like I'm getting a deep, deep discount. And honestly, I order from them in bulk because of that. Um, it's really easy for me to order things like bead caps and chain and, you know, and really pretty beads. I get lots of buy cones from them. It's one of my favorite places to get buy cones. Like you can stock up and sometimes they run their buy cone strands for 99 cents, which I think is awesome. And I mean, you know, they're not like Swarovski buy cones, but I mean, they're still beautiful buy cones and very rarely do I get one that's a dud. So for 99 cents, come on, <laughs> let's, Let's be real about how we like to spend our dollars, right? So um, definitely want you to check out Bargain Bead Box if you haven't yet. Also, I have a coupon code with them. It's SED2, and you can get $2 off of your first box. So we've got in front of, uh, well, I've got in front of me the October box. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I lost the paper that tells me what all these beads are. So I don't know. I'm just going to go through them really, really quickly. And then we're going to do a little design on the fly. Um, you guys know how we do. Sometimes we pre-plan a design and sometimes we design on the fly. I love to design on the fly. It's fun. Um, 
sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. And I think that's kind of what makes it fun. So using the bargain bead box is a fun way to do that because I, I feel like it gives you inspiration, but it also helps you see that like, <laughs> even I can really, really mess some things up. Okay. I'm just like you. I'm just like you. So, <laughs> all right. So we're going to go ahead and get started, my friends. I'm going to turn you around. We're going to take a look at the beads like super quick, and then we're going to get started with something. Okay. We're going to make a, make a pretty, shall we? All right. So getting you turned around here. And I mentioned that there are lots of orange colors in this bead box. Sorry. I'm going to have to tighten up my tripod a little loose. All right. So, <laughs> oh, my dog is at my feet and he just found a shipping invoice and has decided to chew all. It, yeah. I don't know why he does that to me, but like he's destroyed a shipping invoice. Okay. That is a problem for another, another time. Okay. So in this bargain bead box, like I said, I don't have the paper, so I don't even know what they called the theme or anything. Like, it's been a minute, okay? It's been a minute. Um, but I do want to tell you that this was all beautiful fall things, and there's antique brass and owls, which is super, super cool. So I'm going to start out with my very favorite strand in the entire box, and I'm going to assume that this is carnelian. I have no reason to believe that it's not. I wish I had the paper. I could tell you. But it's gorgeous, faceted, shiny. And there's lots of it. Look out, Brad. Eh? Now that, so I struggle with orange unless it's this orange. I, I, and it's because it's on the red side of orange. And I just love, you can even ask Sam. He just sent me a huge shipment of carnate to put kits together with it. Because I love this color. It's perfect. It's perfect for fall. It works all through winter. And honestly, this color is going to get you through spring and summer as well, because this color just, I mean, it, it, there's things that happen in nature that are this color, even in spring and summer. So I'm just saying, think like butterflies and moths and birds and yeah, it's just gorgeous. So that is that we're going to move on. I believe this is some more. <laughs> Bobby's bubbles. Bobby says, Shh, don't tell me I'm at the office. We won't tell. We won't tell. Check these out. Look how beautiful. Some more of that gorgeous, deep, deep orange. And I like I'm I, I'm serious. This this color orange, I struggle with. Okay. I just do. I have a really hard time designing with orange that's this color. However, when you start to mix it in with some darker orange, I kind of get it, right? I can use it. But if it's just this standalone gives me orange and they're like, here, <laughs> make something. I'm like, whoa, that's almost as daunting as using yellow for me. Like this color orange and yellow are just super difficult for me <laughs> to work with. All right. So fortunately for me, I've got some beautiful colors here to go with this. So I believe that these are garnets. If they're not, they're check glass that look exactly like garnets. I'm willing to bet that since they're on a pink strand, though, that these most definitely are garnets. They're really, really beautiful. Okay. And then there are these. These are really pretty. So this is on like the brown side. Look at that sparkle. So pretty. <laughs> Marley Beth, we will forgive you. We will forgive you. <laughs> I think though that you, I think that you're in pretty good control if you know that it's a possibility. <laughs> These are also really beautiful. And these are, have that like, they have that smoky topaz feel to them, but they also have like that flash. You can see that purpley flash, which, which kind of ties them with those beautiful garnets. Like, that's just so pretty. This color palette is just gorgeous. All right. There are these guys. I'm loving all the facets in this box. All of this sparkle just makes me beyond happy. So pretty. I love that there's a good light colored neutral here. These are also gorgeous. I, 
I love this color. I don't know what you call it, but I always kind of refer to it as like champagne, but it's like a golden shadow. I think it's probably more accurate, but it's so pretty. It, to me, works as a neutral as well. All right. These guys are so pretty. Oh, thank you, Cindy. <laughs> Back at you. Back at you. <laughs> Oh gosh. Okay. Then there are these, and I believe that these are, um, I think these are red tiger eye, but again, I don't have the card. So if somebody out there can confirm or deny, <laughs> they're so pretty though. They have like that deep kind of maroon almost on the purple side, which again, kind of goes with the garnets and those crystals. So this kind just look at the color palette. Like this is all of the things I love. <laughs> this color palette is stunning. All right. Now well, here's the owl, a carnelian owl. And I would imagine everybody's owls are a little bit different as far as like the, um, the way they look. Some of you are going to get darker ones. Some of you will get lighter ones. Some of them will have little inclusions in them. Cause I mean, they're, they're made out of gemstones. So I mean, it's not like it's going to be perfectly orange. If it were perfectly orange, that what would the fun be in that? Right. Super, super cute. Okay. So that's not the only owl that we've got going on here in this box. Check out the pendant. So this is really, really big, but I think I'm going to use this in a necklace. I, well, I mean, it would be a little big to be a bracelet. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but I think I'm going to use this today in our design on the fly. I think we're going to use this as our focal. And that's not yet. There are more owls. I love these. I think these are awesome. Check these out. There's a little pair of owls. Perfect for some earrings. They're so cute. And this antique brass was a great compliment to this color palette for sure. That's not it with the owls either. I've got some more owls here. Check these out. So these little owl charms, there's a bunch of those. I think there's 10 all together. Those are so cute. And what's really cool about them is the way their feet come together at the bottom makes a little place where you can dangle something. So like you've got a loop at the top, but then you can also use the little area where their feet come together as a little connector so you could hang something from them as well. So cute. So, so cute. So I'm going to put those up there. All right. One of my favorite metal components in this box are these connectors. Now I actually have some of these in my collection that I ordered from them a while ago and I'm actually going to order some more of them because they make really, really great bracelet focals. However, you also can use these as earrings, put your ear wire here and a drop here. You could do a lot of different drops for a necklace, right? You could do them this way in a necklace and hang things. Well, it would be helpful if you could see. <laughs> You hang things from them and let them be, you know, really cool little accents in the front of a necklace if you wanted to. A good two hole connector can be used in so many different ways. So I always appreciate something where I can hang extra dangles if I want to. <laughs> All right, then we have these little, we have these little leaf beads, right? which are cool. They make good little spacers. Love those. I've actually got some of these in my collection as well that I got from them. And then there are two other things left. So there is some chain. So you've got a bit of chain here that you can use in your design. And then last but not least is a magnetic clasp. And I can't tell you the last time they had a magnetic clasp. Um, in their in their box. So I thought this was a really cool inclusion to have. And it's a pretty strong little magnet. See, 
Love that. Magnetic clasps are great, particularly if you've got dexterity issues. But honestly, I use magnetic clasps for men's jewelry because a lot of times, at least from my experience, men don't necessarily want to mess with like a lobster clasp or a spring ring or anything like that. So if you can put a, um, a magnet on a man's piece of jewelry, they're more apt to wear it because it's easy to get on and off. Um, however, it's good for everybody. I, I love it. I love to have a good bracelet that's got a magnet on it. All right. So that is the box. It's so, so pretty. You can see all of the goodies here for less than $20, which is an absolute deal. Then you get a 30% off coupon that you can use at their site to shop. You can reorder the things that you love from the box, or you can order things that are not in the box that are just in their, um, or from their closeout site, which I think is awesome. So now it's up to us to kind of decide what it is we want to make because it is a design on the fly. So I didn't prepare anything in advance. I did think about it a little bit, but I didn't actually come up with anything. Um, solid. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start in the middle with a cool focal and then work our way upwards from there. So I'm just going to kind of move things out of the way here so that we can, we've got a good work area here. Danielle! Hi, Danielle! Y'all, I got beads from Sam. I got beads from Danielle. I can't wait for you guys to see the kits when they get started, which is this afternoon. I'm going to start working on kits for this week because the beads are amazing. All right. So we're going to start out with our owl here. And I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted this necklace to look, but I did know that I wanted the owl to be the focal. And I wanted to use some chain, which I think might be kind of weird. Um just because of the way that I want to use this chain. So let me show you what I had in mind. So fortunately for me, the owl is sitting off center here in this um, design. So in this, in the circle, he's sitting over here to the right a little bit, which means that I have an opportunity to create some dangly doodads here underneath if I wanted to. And I think what I want to dangle those from is the chain. So I'm going to loop my chain through. Okay. And then I'm going to trim, cut a link here. And then I'm going to hook those two together with a jump ring. Got to find me a jump ring here. Hold on. I did plan in advance to go ahead and like, get some metals that match what we've got going on here. Hold on, hold on. So I've got some findings here that we can use. The owl could be used as a lariat, 100% Wanda, absolutely could. All right, so what I'm thinking is I'm going to take a jump ring and I'm going to connect the two ends of the chain together with the jump ring. And that's going to give me an opportunity to hang something, right? From that jump ring. Okay, but I'm extra, so I can't do just one. <laughs> So I'm going to do a few. I don't know how many will fit in here. And I'm not super worried about how this is hanging right this second because, you know. But I'm going to do a couple and make them different lengths. Okay. So get another jump ring. Hi, Rose. What's Zena in there being extra barky today? Okay. Cheryl says my husband claimed the owl pendant as his, as, as soon as he saw it. That's awesome. I love that. All right, so 
there's two. Should we just leave two or should we do another one? I don't know. So before we make that decision, let's let's hang something from it, right? Let's hang something from it before we make a decision. And I'm thinking the way these are shaped, they would make really good drops. So I'm going to hang two of these from each one of those. Let me grab some head pins here. So I'm going to take one of those beads and I'm going to thread it on to a head pin. And then I'm going to do, I think I'll do a wrapped loop. So bend in the wire over the pliers. Come in with my round nose pliers. We're going to go up and over. Rotate the pliers, take the wire over to the other side. And then we're going to wire wrap in that space. Now my head pins are a little short, so I'm having to go pretty slow here. Also just want to be mindful when I'm doing my wraps, particularly with these beads, that I don't crack the top of the bead with my tool. Um, always just want to be mindful of that, no matter what beads you're using. But if you're using a crystal bead like this, glass crystals in particular are particularly susceptible to um, breaking with your tools. So you just got to be really careful. Okay, so there's one. Let's do another one real quick. Oh, that's interesting. So Wanda said there, um, some people got realistic owls and some of them got whimsical owls. That's pretty cool. Marley Beth's going to put me on the big screen. <laughs> oh, I would love to be on the big screen. I would love to be on the TV. I'm just going to throw that out there. Can we, can we get me back, back on TV again? Not that I don't love our Facebook lives because I do, but y'all know how much, how much I loved that. All right. So I've got my little crystals here. Now, go ahead and open these jump rings back up. I probably shouldn't have attached the jump rings until I knew for sure what I was going to attach to them, just because it's not not always a great idea to open and close a jump ring more times than you need to, but I think I think they'll be okay. Nicole's praying to the TV gods. Thank you, Nicole. I have a face for TV. <laughs> at least you didn't say I had a face for radio. So <laughs> you have a face for radio, Sarah. Give it up. All right. So look, now we've got our little, oh, that's pretty, right? That's kind of pretty. So should we add another one or should we just leave it as two? I kind of like it with just two. I think that's pretty. I mean, I could get crazy and add more, but I mean, let's, let's not, let's, let's not. Let's not get too crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right. All right. So now we can do the necklace part, like the length of the necklace. And I don't know. I definitely want to do something asymmetrical so that there is a little something, something on one side and then a little something, something different on the other side. And I was thinking that... I don't know if there's enough of this, of these carnelian, like the bigger ones, but if there's not, I can always put a little something in between them. Um, so let's see. So what if, what if we just did some simple stringing on one side, right? So simple stringing, using some bead stringing wire to bead string up, to bead string up. I think I just made up a term there. 
don't think that's actually the way you say that. But so I could do just some simple stringing on one side, right? And do just a really beautiful strand. Maybe. I don't know. We could pop some beads in between those. Maybe put some of these in between there. Or, 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 or. Put some of these in between there. Maybe that's what we'll do. In, include some of the metal. Um, and then on the other side, we could do like a wire wrapped. So we could use a little bit of everything, right? So we could... We could do like a wire wrapped chain with, I don't know, again, just kind of, I'm not sure how I want this to, I don't know about that. <laughs> Put that on there and then I was like, mm, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not, I don't know. So let's see, do like that. Um, oh, these are pretty, forgot about those. Oh, I love that. Colleen says she puts her broken and unusable pretties in a big margar margarita glass on my shelf. It's like a beautiful mosaic. I swish it around and boom, new mosaic. I'm I'm in love with that idea. I love that. That's so cool. That's what a great way to use things that you can't necessarily use in a piece that are still beautiful. I love that because I've got like a whole little, a little container that's got some broken things in it that I just don't have the heart to get rid of. I love that. I love that. And I've got some, some Swarovski crystals that are broken. That's a cool way to use those. I like it. She's so smart. <laughs> She's so smart. Okay. So I'm just getting all the little doodads off of that, right? Now there's not enough of these to go the whole way up. Yes, bring me a margarita glass. Where'd you get your big margarita glass from? Could even like pop those in there if I wanted to. Ooh, okay, okay. I'm not mad at that. Um, what else could I add in here? So we could even we could even make this a double. On this side, we could do like a double strand on this side and a single strand on the other. Oh, okay. So let's just start. Let's see what happens. Let me grab some bead stringing wire. I've got to find some wire guardians too. So what I'm thinking is on one side, not sure where those wire guardians are though. Um, <clears throat> that was the one thing I didn't think to get was the wire guardians out. I should have done that ahead of time. I apologize. For not having pre-planned that. Grab some of these. These are not my favorite, but we'll use them anyway. Um, and I'm gonna need some crimpy poos. Yes, that's a technical term. I don't know about you, but my crimps are crimpy poos, okay? Alright, I'm gonna dump some of these in a little container because they're mixed with other things. Okay. Let's do it. So I'm going to start out on this side with just the stringing. Okay. So I'm going to cut myself a piece of bead stringing wire. Now remember, even if I don't have enough beads to make a full strand to make like an 18, 20, 22, whatever the length of the necklace is, I still have chain left over, right? So you can always like add chain as your length to things if it's not long enough to go all the way around. So always just keep that in mind. So crimp bead going on, then wire guardian. And I don't know if I want my wire guardian to go directly on or if I want to put a jump ring in between there. I think I'm actually going to use a jump ring in between there just so that things are not too, too crowded, especially if we end up with three strands coming together here. So I'm not going to add any hardware. I mean, I am going to add extra hardware, but I'm not going to add this hardware to that right this second. So, uh, don't, don't want my bead string wire to be crisscrossing inside my crimp. Okay. Just want to be sure that those wires are running parallel inside there. I'm going to grab our crimper tool and put that in the back notch of the crimper tool. Give it a squeeze. Then you're going to turn it sideways. 
and give it another squeeze just to make it more compact. And you've got yourself a tiny little crimp here. And I'm gonna come in with my cutter tool, trim off the excess, don't need any of that. Okay, all right. So I think I will go ahead just so that I can kind of keep up with the length of this. I'm gonna go ahead and put a jump ring on and attach it to our focal. That way, as I'm stringing, I can really kind of keep up with, with the length of everything. All right, so I'm gonna do one of the faceted carnelians, do one of those leaves. And I think I'm just gonna do that pattern for a bit. <laughs> I'm gonna do that for a bit, okay? We'll just, we'll see what happens here. I mean, I could always change it up and pop something else in there. But I'm going to get too crazy. Because I feel like this necklace is already going to have a lot going on anyway. So if you want to leave out the metal on this side, you absolutely can just do the carnelian if you want. And honestly, since this is a design on the fly, we really don't know what the results are going to be. You don't have to do any of this because it's entirely possible that this is going to be a hot mess. Um, but I mean, hopefully not. Right. So let me grab the rest of these leaves just so that I have them here at my disposal, if you will. So for those of you who did Halloween fun yesterday, did y'all have a good time? Anybody do anything super special? Um, I didn't, we didn't do anything special. We watched scary movies all weekend, which was fun, and just kind of ate junk food and hung around in our PJs. But then uh, last night we had Q and I are taking salsa lessons and bachata, bachata, and so that's that's how we spent our Halloween night. It was that da dance class? And it was fun. We had a good time. Living out here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> There are no trick-or-treaters, so there was no worries that, like, we were going to leave and miss out on, like, handing out candy or anything. So there's, like, nobody out here. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest with you. I mean, it's okay, but it's really not my favorite. I, I'm going to take that off. A lot of you are screaming at your TV or your phone or your iPad right now. No, but I'm not, I don't love those metal beads in between there like that. <laughs> Cheryl says, I love how that's looking. And I immediately am like, oh, it's undone now. What if I do two, right? I think that, I think it's just the spacing I was not loving. So what if I do two carnelian and then a leaf? I think I might like that better. It just felt kind of funny to me. Yeah, Kim had the same idea, maybe two or three. I think that's, I like that idea. And you know what? Let's mix it up. Let's do two and then we'll do three and then we'll do two and then we'll do three. Cause I mean, why not? We can, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all are thinking same way I was thinking. Yeah. I like that much better. It's cool. Okay. It's also a really good way to extend your gemstone beads. So whether you've got metal beads to go in between them or maybe um, some seed beads or, you know, just daisy spacers or whatever you've got, it's a great way to pop something in between um, your, your gemstones in case you don't have a whole lot of them, right? But you still want to use them. Maybe you don't have enough for an entire you know, 20 inch necklace, but really, really want to use them. Using some spacers is always, always smart. And I just found some more that were hiding over here. Hold on. <laughs> so let's see, there's one. I dressed up as the Reaper. My daughter dressed up as a seventies chick and we went to Cheddar's and then went home. Oh my gosh. And watched Beetlejuice. I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. 
I think that, oops, we we're only supposed to do two here. I love that. So next year, I want to do something like that. Like, hopefully it won't be on a Monday, so I won't have like any prior engagement. And like, I just want to get dressed up and go somewhere out in public. <laughs> All dressed up. We were going to go out this weekend, but um, I don't know. Some of you know that uh, Jojo has a broken foot, so he's on crutches. And some of you know who Jojo is and some of you don't. Jojo is like my, um, how should I put it? Jojo's my brother. <laughs> Not by blood. Um, but, you know, and Q and I could have gone out without Jojo. But I mean, who wants to do that? Leave your friend at home that doesn't, you know, can't go out and do any. That's no fun. So instead, we we stayed with Jojo and we watched scary movies, which was fun because Q's afraid of everything. So he doesn't like scary movies. <laughs> so it was it was a lot of fun to watch scary movies with him this weekend. And I got a cake, which was funny because it was nobody's birthday, but I was like, I'm, I'm going to buy a cake because <laughs> I just wanted cake. Sometimes I just want store-bought birthday cake. Is anybody else like that out there? So I bought a store-bought birthday cake and we ate birthday cake for no good reason this weekend while we watched movies. Wanda says spacers are the unsung, unsung heroes in beating. I agree. I agree. All right. So here's our necklace length. We're getting, we're getting there. I want this to be kind of long though. So Carrie Ann, that's one of my favorites. I haven't seen that movie in so long. I really, really like it. We watched, um, we watched Halloween, the last Halloween one that came out. I can't remember what it's called. Halloween ends. That's not what it's called, but that's, <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember what it's called. It was the end. Um, so we watched that and um, we watched Demon House, which some of y'all know is the movie about it's it was the documentary that Zach Bagans did about the house that he bought in Gary, Indiana. Cause re remember when we went to Vegas, we saw all of that stuff. Cause he kept the, he kept the stairs and some of the dirt from the foundation of that house. And we got to see it when we went to that museum. So we watched that and what else did we watch? We watched all kinds of stuff. We watched the old Hellraiser and the new Hellraiser. The new one's very different than the old one. Halloween ends. Was that really what it was called? <laughs> yes. So Rosalinda says, yes, I used to buy cake and write just because it's Tuesday on it. Uh-huh. Yep. That's me. That's me. Like I, I, and I'm not a, I don't bake. Okay. I just don't, I barely kitchen. You guys know, I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and in this strand. Um, it looks to be about a 20, it's going to be about a 20, maybe 22 inch necklace. So I'm going to go ahead and in this, in this with a crimp and then we're going to work on the other side. Um, but anyway, what was I even saying? Um, I don't even know. <laughs> I honestly forgot what I was saying because then we got to talking about this necklace. I don't know. It must have not been super important. Something about movies or something. Food? Cake? Oh, I don't kitchen very well. Yeah. So I don't bake. I wish that I did because I love baked goods like breads and cookies and cake. And it's amazing to me that I don't weigh 400 pounds because I love baked goods so much. Um, but... Store-bought cake with buttercream icing. That's like of the gods, okay? Like, I'm telling you. Like, this is one of the greatest things that ever happened to flour <laughs> and butter and sugar. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't bake at all. And um, store-bought sheet cake. Some people hate it, right? And would just much rather have like homemade cake. Mm -mm. I don't like homemade cake. First of all, every one that I ever made turned into a volcano, right? The edges were burnt. The inside or the, then the, there was a ring of like non-cooked and then the inside or the middle would like heap up. And uh, yeah, I never had good luck with that. So I, I prefer like store-bought <laughs> cakes. 
store-bought cakes and Krispy Kreme donuts. That's the way to win my heart. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and it has to be buttercream frosting that's just straight up butter buttercream. Like, don't give me that whipped. Don't don't whip my icing, okay? I don't want whipped icing. This crimp is very fickle. I want just regular, straight up. The more butter and sugar, the better. <laughs> Goes straight to my hips, and I'm okay with it that kind of buttercream. Don't whip it. Don't add air to it, please. <laughs> yeah, I miss Krispy Kreme. We don't have a Krispy Kreme out here. Where I used to live, Krispy Kreme would deliver, which is probably a good thing that they don't deliver out here. However, uh, I, I when I Instacart my groceries, my grocery store carries fresh Krispy Kreme donuts, so I can still get them but it's not, it's just not the same. <laughs> it's not the same as being able to go to Krispy Kreme and like pick out exactly what you want. Okay. So this strand, right, is done. Now it was just, I would do three carnelian and then a leaf two, a leaf three. And so that was my, that's the pattern for that. We got some grumpy faces here. Why are we grumpy? Come on now. No grumpy. I was just stringing. So I was just chatting. <laughs> You know what they say. Okay. So uh, something about don't let the door. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I mean, for real, if you're grumpy, maybe eat a Snickers bar or some cake. Okay. So on this side, I'm going to do two strands and I'm going to do a, um, a wire or a beaded chain here. And I think I'm going to do crystals like that. And then put a leaf connector and then we'll do them again because this way it's going to remember we've got these two crystals down here hanging from our pendant this is going to bring those up here into the necklace as well so they're not just like random crystals that don't make any sense we're going to bring that color and that shape up here into the top part of the necklace and I've got enough of these to do I think three of those little sections. Okay. So, all right. I'm going to keep it simple. I could cut my own wire and, and do all of that. But honestly, I, I don't want to keep you guys here forever. And we really, I do want to try to finish this if we can. Um, so I'm going to use some eye pins if I can find some. That's the issue is trying to find some head pins. I've got eye pins. That's a little different. Looks like I might be out of short ones. So we may have to use some of these super long ones. I need to make an order. <laughs> I need to order findings. Because look, we're going to use these really long ones. And I hate it when I have to do that. All right. So we're just going to do a beaded chain. And I'm just going to do simple loops since we're going to use eye pins. Okay. So I'm going to bend the wire where it exits the bead, not over my tools. And I'm going to come in with my cutter tool leave myself about a fourth of an inch of wire and then I'm going to use my round nose pliers and I'm going to roll back to close up my loop okay and I'm going to do that in sections of three for the beads okay And do another one. <laughs> Susanna, listen, my waistline says I probably shouldn't be eating that cake either. It reminds me that. See, here's the thing, though. I lost a lot of weight when I got divorced. So I do have to be careful. Like, I don't want to gain it all back. But I'm also in that... that part of my life where I'm like, you know what? I can be fat and happy. <laughs> I got a man <laughs> and he likes cake too. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I do, I try not to overdo it, but I do love cake and I will sit down with a piece of cake. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say so. Waistline or not. <laughs> 
somebody said a minute ago that they would rather die fat and happy. <laughs> I, I kind of feel that too. Like I, I, I wasted too much time in an unhappy place. So I'm going to have cake. You know what? I'm going to have cake. <laughs> it's all right though. Not everybody can do cake and that's okay. All right. There are some happy alternatives to cake. I don't want y'all to think that I'm like an absolute glutton here. All right. So attached to that, and I don't buy cake all the time as much as I would love to. <laughs> I'm going to attach jump rings. So these I've attached to each other, right? I didn't put jump rings in between there. However, if I really needed Gina's cake as my favorite food group, I feel that in my soul. <laughs> If I needed to add length to this, so let's say that I don't have enough of the crystals to make this strand as long as this strand over here, and I need them to be the same length, then I can always come back in here and where I have connected these to each other, I can pop a jump ring in between there and that's gonna give me a little extra length. Now I don't have to use a six millimeter jump ring to do that. I can use like a three millimeter or a four millimeter jump ring to do that. So it's not gonna detract from the overall design, but it is gonna give me that little extra length that I might need. Um, so you've got options. Your jump rings can really, I feel like jump rings are exactly the way Wanda described spacer beads. They're definitely the unsung heroes of jewelry making because jump rings come in so many different sizes that you can use little ones and extend things. Um, you can use big ones and make awesome dangly wonderfulness. I mean, you know, you can do a lot with a jump ring. So always know that that can, that can be your your um your saving grace in your necklace if you need extra <laughs> okay albert that's enough that's enough all right so we did that little section let's do another one where it's the crystal another crystal just the smaller one and then a larger one yeah, Stacy says I use a wrap loop to help fill space if I need it. That's a great way to fill space too. Um, if I were cutting my own wire, I would definitely be doing wrap loops here, but I'm keeping it super, super simple. So just making my loops for each one of my beads here. <laughs> Nicole says all this cake talk is making her hungry, right? I haven't eaten lunch yet. And I'm thinking, okay, I could go make like a bowl of leftover chili or I could just have a piece of cake. <laughs> Maybe I'll just have a piece of cake. That's funny. If it really is a birthday around here and we have cake, one of my favorite things to do, and I don't do this with just any cake, right? I, I really do have show some restraint uh, when it comes to the difference between every day just because birthday cake, it's nobody's birthday, and I just want cake, cake, to birthday cake. Birthday, real birthday cake, if it actually is someone's birthday and we're celebrating, that cake is completely acceptable to eat for breakfast. <laughs> But only for like a morning or two. Like, I mean, you don't want to like, you don't want to have cake every day for breakfast until the cake is gone. I mean, like, you know, the day after your birthday and maybe the day after that. Cake is a completely acceptable breakfast food, but not for every day unbirthday cake. <laughs> I have standards after all. <laughs> they may not make any sense, but. I mean, the rules according to Sarah when it comes to cake, okay? All right, so now I'm going to do, let's stretch this out a little bit. <laughs> let's stretch this out because I know I'm not going to have enough to make it all the way to the end. I don't believe I don't. Um, so, which is a shame because it looks like just two more crystals here would make it, but I will just add some chain here, right? That's that it's going to be at the back of the necklace. Nobody's ever going to notice. Um, I mean, they might, but even still it all matches. So it doesn't, it's not that big a deal. 
Okay. So we're going to do three more. Yeah, cake has all the breakfast components. That's exactly, exactly. It's a completely acceptable. <laughs> completely accept I mean, let's be honest, okay? I've seen people eat pancakes and waffles that have like chocolate syrup and whipped cream and strawberry goo. And like, so, I mean, if we're talking about calories... I would rather have a piece of birthday cake for breakfast as opposed to a waffle that has all of that insane stuff on it. I mean, if we're trying to justify it, but I mean, we really don't need to, do we? <laughs> and, and there's also these two rules that like, if you, if you eat it over the sink, right, then the calories don't count. Also, if you eat it in the dark, the calories don't count. So, I mean, there's ways around <laughs> You know I'm joking, right? But, I mean. <laughs> All right. Going to link these three beads together. Oh, y'all are sharing cake recipes. I'm just not a. My cake recipe is add to cart. <laughs> Check out. <laughs> Okay. Apple cake. Yum. Now see, that is an acceptable breakfast cake right there. Oh, yummy. Apple everything this time of year is just delicious. All right, so just linking all this together. As you can see, not really doing anything crazy here. Oh, Wanda, that's brilliant. If you break a cookie in half, all the calories fall out. Now that, that is a rule I need to, for whatever reason, these are all hanging backwards. I'm, I'm going to need you to turn around. That is a, that is a, I can totally get behind that. 100%. That's brilliant. Yes, break it in half. All the calories will fall out and you are good to go. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I love this group so much. <laughs> I love it. Anything you eat standing up has no calories. Y'all are awesome. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Okay, so just pulling my strands together here, okay? Both sides of the necklace here. And you can see I've got a little extra room here. So we're going to we're gonna pop some chain in. And it's just a little bit of chain. It's not a lot. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. Oh, gosh. Y'all, listen. We're sitting here talking about cake and my phone just went off. It's sitting here next to me. You can probably hear it buzzing. You're never going to believe who's calling me. The dentist. It's like he knows. He knows. <laughs> he says, oh no, forget about your waistline. Remember those chompers? We're going to need you to, if you're going to eat cake, you're going to have to make an extra trip to the dentist. <laughs> blindfold I have a hard time eating blindfold but let me tell you what there's this place in Vegas so we're planning on going back to Vegas y'all um, probably in February and <laughs> the top rated restaurant those of you who've been there probably know this but the top rated restaurant in Las Vegas is a place it's a sensory um it's going to need another jump ring. It's a sensory experience and you eat in complete blackness. And it's to heighten your, um, you know, your taste senses and your smell senses. And I couldn't convince Q to do it when we were there last time. But I think the next time we go, we're going to do it. 
because I think that sounds wonderful. He was like, I don't, I don't know that I could eat without being able to see. <laughs> I kind of feel that too, <laughs> but like, I really want to check it out. I really, really want to check it out. Okay. So this strand is done and I want to, I'm kind of feeling like it needs to be a double. And here's the thing. This strand is definitely not long enough. I will have to put chain on the back of it. <laughs> I have a dentist appointment tomorrow, actually. That's why they were calling me. I just think it's funny. Ruth says, sorry, I'm with you. You don't want to eat in the dark? Oh, come on. <laughs> live a little. Live a little. So this strand is not long enough. I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and I want to string it exactly like it is. It's going to run right next to this one. So it's going to be a double strand on this side and a single strand on this side. And it might look awful, but I don't even care because these beads all in a line like this, I have, I have such a soft spot for tiny little beads, um, especially if they're faceted and gorgeous. So I'm going to cut another piece of bead stringing wire <coughs> and we're going to do another little crimp and then I'm going to string this up. And guys, when we get to the end of this one, we're going to add hardware to it and call it done. And we're going to see what it looks like. Okay. So we're almost finished. If you'll hang around with me while I string up the rest of these beads, I promise you we'll actually have a finished piece here. So let's see. I have lost the wire guardians. All right. Mmm, spice cake. That sounds yummy. There, I, there are so many things that I wish that I could make. Like, I wish that I was good at baking. I'm just not. I've never had very good look at it, uh, luck at it. I'm getting so much better at cooking in general, though, you guys. Like, for real. Um, I even have a list on the side of the refrigerator of things that I can cook. So now people can like put in a request. I'm not saying I'm going to, you know, do what they ask, but I mean, you can request a meal here. <laughs> Whereas before, like you were limited to like cereal and frozen pizza. Now I actually have a whole list of things, but I wish that I could bake because there are so many things that I love to eat like pineapple upside down cake. Oh man. Like, I wish I could make pineapple upside, upside down cakes. That's just not something that you can buy at the grocery store and, and it be the same as homemade, you know? There's just no way that that's going to be as good as homemade. And, like, my mom makes pecan sandies, which I know that, like, I should just let mom make them. But she only makes them one time a year. And sometimes it's not that time of year. And I just want a pecan sandy, like a homemade one. For some of you, that's a pecan, Sandy. <laughs> Depends on where you're at. I also love um, Danish wedding cookies as well, which are very similar because they're also coated in powder. Okay, listen. So I'll just be honest. Just, just coat anything in powdered sugar and I'll eat it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> pecan Sandies, Danish wedding cookies, Mexican wedding co cookies. If it's got powdered sugar on the outside of it and it's a cookie, I'm there. <laughs> Pineapple upside down cake is easier than you think. Is it really? Funnel cake. Oh, man. Yeah, I only eat funnel cake like maybe once or twice a year. When we go to Dollywood, I don't get it every time we go to Dollywood, but it's definitely a Dollywood thing. And... Sometimes I get it just plain with just like powdered sugar on it, but you can get, you can get funnel cake at Dollywood that has edible flowers. Like, mm -hmm. it's, you can get fancy funnel cake. All right. I'm just stringing these up. Okay. It's just taking me a minute cause they're, they're little, but fortunately there's not a ton of them. So just hang in there with me. You want to see what the rest of this necklace looks like when we're finished. I'm also having a hard time seeing the hole on these beads because they're so small and the little facets. I'm about to give up on this one. <laughs> like I know it, I, I know it's drilled, 
No, it is. I just can't find it. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Dump cakes. I do know how to make a dump cake. Now that is super, super easy and so yummy. Is it pineapple upside down cake kind of similar? A hanging oven thermometer. You know what I wish I could make? Baklava. That's my favorite thing at Christmas time. When I was a kid growing up, my um, my dad's side of the family, we always had baklava at Christmas. And I've tried to make baklava several times in my life and it never turned out. And store-bought baklava is nowhere near <laughs> the same. Not even close. But that for sure is my kryptonite. And if I knew how to make baklava, I probably really would weigh about 400 pounds. Because I would eat it every day. <laughs> Breakfast, lunch, dinner, midnight snack. I would, I would live on baklava. <laughs> Allison says her Mia made the best. Right, it's always somebody in your family that does it the best. Oh my goodness, it's taken me way too long to string these beads. I wish they would string themselves. I apologize for it taking a minute. <laughs> They're so tiny. Yes, I love Greek food so much. So, so much. All Greek food is good. Ugh, come on. All in how you prepare the dough, like the phyllo dough. It's so hard to work with if you're not used to it. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. We're, we're so close. We're so close y'all. Just give me another couple minutes. We'll get the rest of these and we'll be done. I promise. I promise. The only thing about Greek food that I don't like is I don't, I don't eat lamb. And so there's a lot of recipes that call for lamb and I'm, it's just not, it's not my thing. You have so much candy left over. So listen, speaking of, that makes me think of something, which you guys are going to wonder how I made that connection. Um, because I do have some candy left over too that will probably end up in all of your shipments coming up. So <laughs> if you make purchases from my Etsy shop, you're probably going to get some, you're probably going to get some hard candy uh, in your shipment just because I have leftovers. Um, However, I wanted to mention to those of you who have ordered shipments in the past, like I think two, the past two Feel Good Fridays, um, they've been missing their, um, their cards. You know how I put the affirmation cards in there with your shipment? Um, the supplier that I get those from has been out. I just got a shipment of them yesterday. So if you've been missing your your card with your orders, those are coming back. So I apologize for those not being there. I was completely out and just waiting for my supplier to restock. 
I know some of you collect them. That's why I'm even mentioning it. Because some of you, it doesn't matter one way or another. Um, but some of you collect them and some of you do some really cool things with them. Um, some of you have them hanging around your workspace. And you get sad when they're not included in your in your shipment. So just know. If you marinate the lamb for 24 hours prior. Interesting. What do you marinate it in? I've just not ever had it where maybe that's the problem. I've just not ever had it where I thought that it. I don't know. Just. I don't know. Maybe some of it's just mental for me. <laughs> oh my God, it's a little lamb. I don't want to eat it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't eat deer for the same reason. Lamb on the grill. Interesting. Maybe I should give it another try. Albert, that was unnecessary. Okay, this is the last bead. It's the last one. We're right at the finish line. Oh, gosh. Oh, Wanda says, I love my Sarah love cards. I know, right? It's, it's like people get a little bit out of shape if I don't include those. So I feel bad. Like I've been not had those. Okay. So I've strung up all of those. Yes. It, it, the strand is not long enough. No, I don't care. We are going to add chain to the back of this. It's totally going to be fine. And we are almost done with this necklace y'all. Okay. So, Wire Guardian, the Greek people next door marinate it for three to four days. Wow. I wish I had Greek people that live next door. They'd be tired of seeing me. <laughs> like, oh, here comes Sarah again. She must be hungry. Mm, Y'all, I, now I know what I'm going to eat for dinner. We're going, we're going for Greek for dinner tonight. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're ready. I am not loving these these crimp beads. I don't know where they came from. They're not bead along, I can tell you that, because I usually just get tubes, not beads, but these are just what I had around. Okay, so trim that off, okay? Now we're gonna attach it. I can't wait to see what this looks like hanging. It's probably gonna look terrible. <laughs> Not probably, but there is a chance that it's not going to look as good hanging as I think that it is going to look, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. Okay. So I'm going to attach this down here too. And then up here, we're going to transition into some chain. Now, if you don't like the train, the chain transition, you're going to have to get you some more beads. Okay. But I used up all the ones I had in this color, and I just wanted it to be like a straight strand of those. So, y'all, Kathy's making some soup. <laughs> I'm like that with Kathy. Kathy makes soup, and I'm like, I, I, I'm, I, I have to, I don't have to beg. She will just make soup and let me have some of it. But like, if Kathy lived next door to me, it's probably she's probably really thankful that I don't live next door to her. Because I'm, I'm like that with her soups. She makes the most amazing soups in the entire universe. And she she gives me containers of soup. Oh, man. And she just told me she's making soup. Oh, there she is. She says, LOL. <laughs> she's making soup soon. And like, that's all I've been able to think about for since she told me that. Like, oh, man. She makes the best soup. <laughs> she really does. Okay. So that one's going to need one more jump ring, too. And then we're going to bring these strands together. Kathy, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I'm not sharing my soup with Q. <laughs> He's not allowed to know how wonderful your soup is because then I will have to share it with him. And I, I will be stingy about my soup. Okay, I'm going to use our magnetic clasp if I can find it. I don't know what happened to it. It wandered off. So attach that there. 
and then I'm going to do it on the other side and then I'm going to turn this around and we're going to put this on the bust and we're going to look at it together. So if it looks awful, at least we'll see it together at the exact same time. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Sarah, the soup bandit. Yes. Yes, indeed. Okay. Turning all around. Hello, my beautiful friends. Okay. Now, no promises that this is going to look any good, but... Okay, hold on. I'm just trying to get it straight on here. Now, for a design on the fly, I'm not going to lie. This turned out pretty good. Hold on. I got a tangle at the bottom. Not that designs on the fly don't turn out good. It's just that sometimes you just, you never know, right? You never know what's going to happen. But, so here we go. There's our, our double strand. It's actually three strands, honestly. So we've got... I like it because it's nice and long, right? But we've got our, would you do what you're supposed to do, please? There are people watching. <laughs> so we have our owl here at the bottom with its pretty little dangly doos, right? And then we've got just the beaded strand with the carnelian on one side. And then our, our, um, our beaded chain strand. And I like that I doubled it. And the reason that I like that I doubled it over here um, and made this strand two strands is because I feel like without it, it would have been a little bit unbalanced where one side just felt a little heavier than the other. So giving this, whoa, giving this one, <laughs> everything's backwards. Okay. Um, giving this one two strands kind of chunks it up a little bit to make it more balanced, but there you go. I think that turned out beautifully. Really, really cool. I'm glad that it turned out because I mean, just, just like I said, with design on the fly, you never really know what you're going to get. So I'm glad that this one worked out. I think it looks really, really pretty. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Yeah, it definitely could have been a lariat too. So you could have just done like one whole strand and taken it through the, the loop with the owl in it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have enjoyed and that I have given you some inspiration for that October bargain bead box. Listen, speaking of bead boxes, I just want to throw this out there. First and foremost, you can use um, the code SED2 on bargain bead box. Don't forget to get $2 off of your first bead box. The second bead box that we love so much is Sam's bead box. You guys, you've got one week left to sign up for Sam's Speed Box to get in on the next one. And you can use the code SARA for $5 off on that one. So don't forget, I support two amazing bead boxes and Sam's Speed Box is top notch. So don't forget about that coupon code as well. And again, you've got a week to sign up if you want to get on to the next shipment. So um, don't forget about that. Okay. Don't forget about that. I got to give love to both of them because they're both amazing. All right, my friends, you guys have an amazing rest of your afternoon. I will be here again on Friday for our Feel Good Friday show at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, if you are a member of the Hardwired group, that will, will be meeting at 5 p.m. Eastern time today. And listen, if you want to join Hardwired, open enrollment is still going on. So come on over and sign up for the group. Make sure you answer the questions and we'll get you invoiced so that you can come and play with us at the Hardwired group, okay? All right, guys, have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you soon, okay? Bye.